So yeah, as I said, I'm just going to talk today about uh, my actually actually my first product project as an independent designer um, and this Kickstarter uh, campaign we did with a really good friend of mine, Josha Brose. Um, we did this campaign because uh, we both were working for design studios for many years and we got a little bit, we wanted to do something on our own, our own and launch our own uh, design studios and projects. So we thought we really like to design something and then both being a little bit bored of hard, the usually uh, the design process works. Um, we get a bit tired of the long times and the many, many people who get who is involved um, between the design process, the production, and the distribution. So we thought we would like to do it slightly different and, and challenge the way things are put in the market and try to do everything ourselves. So um, take control of the whole process and design piece, produce it, distribute it, and and use the technologies that we have available nowadays. I mean, everything is made on the internet. You can buy online, you can sell online, um, you can get access to uh, manufacturers and producers in all around the world much easier than before. And, and obviously you have platforms which helps you do that, like Kickstarter, crowdfunding, uh, and get uh, money and funding to, to produce your thing. So we thought it was a brilliant idea. And we really wanted to go and, and test that and try it. So we both quit our jobs and we went and give, we gave everything we had um, to this project. And we did this as well because obviously we wanted our product to be a quality design product, which is what we've been doing all these years. But we wanted to make it affordable and accessible to, to everyone, to our friends, um, and with people who couldn't uh, usually afford that. So um, Kickstarter could help us do that by cutting middleman costs. So by producing and selling directly, we will cut markups, with, which are brand profits a lot of times, or whatever is a retail markup. Um, so we will be able to make something more accessible. Um, so we decided to design this piece, the one you see down there, it's a, a flat pack valet stand. Um, obviously the reason why it's flat pack is because we saw this is gonna be sold online, so people will have to ship it around to people, so we have to think about um, the way this is more easy for people. Everyone is buying online clothes, um, food, and stuff like that, but we found a little bit of a gap two years ago, and we said furniture is not as strong. People is not buying furniture online as much. And in Kickstarter as well, we noticed that there was not much furniture in Kickstarter. There was a lot of films, video games, gadgets, but not furniture. And we found out later uh, why, probably, <laughs> there was much furniture <laughs> in Kickstarter, uh, because it's not easy at all. Uh, it was really, really hard time. We really had struggled quite a lot because um, obviously our market was not on Kickstarter. People using Kickstarter were not expected to buy furniture there. We were expecting not to spend too much money. And obviously a piece of furniture, whatever cheaper you can make it, is always a big investment. So um, this was our really big fear of failing, really. This, we were looking at this like every day since we started the campaign. Um, we knew we needed to reach that uh, target. Um, in order to get 100% of funding to be able to, to pay for our production and, and produce. Um, so it was really, we were targeting, okay, we're, we're not at the middle and in the middle yet, and we were really, really, really scared. So we kind of freaked out, and when and we started to, we decided to actually, we started this project online, the idea of we can sell online, we can do everything online, we can promote through social medias, Facebook, Twitter, but then we found like, no, we need to go out on the street. We're going to go to our local market. We need to, you know, old style flyers, print, and because we were really desperate and, and worried of not getting this project because we really put everything we had on it. We, lost, we left our jobs, we left everything. Um, so it's, it's funny how things sometimes really come back to, um, yeah, we can use online things, but we can also go um, more like physical. And it's a physical product, so people need to see it. Um, Luckily, at the end, we have to say, um, the Kickstarter campaign was actually <laughs> successful. We managed to get the funding. We got the funding by 145 backers. Um, we got 122%, so even more than what we were explaining, after really, really a lot of work and a lot of stress. Um, so this was a success, in a way. We didn't really fail, and we were like really, really happy about it. But then, 
more chances of failing came along and we were like, okay, now we have this huge list of 145 people who need to ship the product before Christmas because that's what we promised. So we're like, we can't fail on this, we can't really uh, put people down and we have like over 20 countries we have to ship all around uh, the, the world. So it was like, that's really, really a lot. Um, so we started to um, get these pieces done and obviously along the way we had a lot of problems that you can never expect and you can never really think about it. Um, you know, we have issues with the manufacturer, they, they delay the production, we receive pieces which were not uh, respecting the quality that we expected, so we have to ship them back, we have to fly over to a manufacturer in, in Northern Europe, and all this came out of our pockets. We were putting money, it was okay, we make, make some margin with the pieces we sold, but we have to spend a lot of money now by you know, chasing out the suppliers, buying new materials, all those things that you don't really, really consider um, before. And you were like, oh my God, I mean, we're, you know, we are really, really short of money in Animo. And so finally we received all these boxes. And as I said before, we were doing everything uh, ourselves. And I mean, we were just two designers. We never done business before. We never done uh, distribution before. We never, you know, never need, didn't knew how it works. So we were really learning about it every day. Uh, learning how to distribute stuff, how to deal with a lot of different people. Um, so it was really, really a lot of stress and work. Um, but after all, um, this paid off as well. So although we knew we were late, I mean, we couldn't, we failed to deliver the pieces before Christmas as we promised. We were three months late. Uh, Unfortunately, we had, we had a lot of people disappointed about it, but everyone showed us a lot of support, and they said they're really happy to wait. And then, you know, the press came out, the product was really everywhere, we were really, really overwhelmed by, by the, the amount of people who was interested in the product, and, and um, we managed to uh, produce the pieces for the Kickstarter, and we also opened an online um, store and our website, and we sold all the remaining pieces um, on this website as well. So was really good, but we realized, okay, now we are, we are a brand, we are actually a company, we are manufacturers of design. Um, we, we, we make our brand called Bros for Gale, and obviously you need, to be, uh, you need to be competitive with all the other brands that are out there, otherwise uh, that would be it, so we couldn't really, really wish for what. So um, we again invested that money we had into taking part of fairs, uh, around the world, um, exhibitions, everything, because everything that you could promote your brand is really, really important. Um, but that's basically really, really all our money was just like flying away as quick as, as it came in. Um, so we, at the end we found out in a situation which was, was quite hard because that money that was going into investing in the brand was supposed to go into investing in the next production of, of, the, of the second batch of products. Um, to carry on, basically, because it's really like a domino effect. If you stop at some point, um, then you don't. So, so we did send, sell all the products. We did completely sold out of the stuff we produced. Um, but we all, not only finished the products, we also finished the money. Um, so we, in a way, we found ourselves, okay, what, so what's next? I mean, we are almost at the same point of the starting point. So we don't have fundings, we don't have products. Um, and unfortunately, we didn't have anything to back us up. I mean, we spent a year, because it really took us a whole year to do the product uh, without a job apart from this. Uh, we still have to pay our rent. Um, so unfortunately, we couldn't, we couldn't be able to, um, to pay for a second batch production. So now we, we have to really slow down. Um, we stop selling the products online. Uh, we are trying to make that approach of made to order Project, but this is not really what we wanted because a made-to-order product always going to cost more money to produce because you're making one by one, uh, probably made locally or made in the. So that's not really what we wanted to achieve from the first time. We wanted to make something that was really working as uh, producing small batches and selling to a good, um, in a good price. So we have to uh, close down our online shop. And, also, we just closed the company because um, I think the whole thing was everything took over much bigger than what we um, expected. We never really expected. Initially, we were planning to produce 50 pieces, and that was our plan. Let's produce 50 pieces, selling on Kickstarter. We produced 125 
uh, plus all the accessories, so about 300 products, um, which was much more bigger than what we planned. And unfortunately, I think none of us were really businessmen, or we didn't really know how to run a business. And we found that we needed uh, help or we needed support. So um, I think now we will see if we find someone who wants to invest in business or go probably again into the more traditional way of selling your design to someone to manufacture. Um, so I guess we, we probably fell into trying um, to challenge the way things are made. But hopefully this, I mean, it gives us a lot of courage to try anyways. And we will try again and we will keep doing. Um, I have a new studio now <laughs> with Leticia and we are making our own things. Um, and we just learned, learned, from our, learned from our mistakes and we learn from not, not just mistakes, but also we learn to get better every time. So yeah, that's, I think I'm needed to <laughs>